episode eight of Catch Up with Max and Jose. The one with the trenchers. Ooh. Remember that's how they used to name all of the, I think it was Friends episodes, where like the one with the... That's exactly what I was going for, except it turns out Friends did it first. <laughs> Friends did it first. <laughs> Simpsons did it. <laughs> all right. All right. Steal from so you. thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, today we are revisiting Max's Tasting History episode on trenchers. Trenches. Oh, and today we are drinking just soda water and one of my favorite gins, the uh, Hendrix Midsummer Solstice. Enough flavor that all you need is a little soda water. Mwah. This is not sponsored or anything. I just really like it. And it's in a WandaVision cup. WandaVision, WandaVision. <laughs> Hashtag not an ad. Not an ad. <laughs> just things Max likes. <laughs> so um, on this episode, you discuss your visit to the medieval times. And remember, we went for my birthday. We did go for your birthday. Well, it, a few times, but. Was it your 22nd birthday? Yeah, it was like three years ago. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't know. That was a while ago, but we went, and I love medieval times. Um, but I give them a hard time for their lack of historical accuracy. Though it's kind of funny because then I do things that are <laughs> historically inaccurate in the episode. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's it's really hard to be replicate something exactly because it's impossible. You know, the ingredients are not exactly the same as they were. No. They're sourced from different locations. The ingredient might not exist. Like, yeah. the air quality is different. Everything is different. Well, especially when it comes to, like, wheat and stuff like that. It's changed. That's just how, you know, biology works. Yeah. So, is what it is. It is what it is. But um, You know, before we dive in talking about trenchers, well, let's start us off. What is a trencher? Trencher is comes from the word tranchier, uh, meaning to slice, and it's just a, a thick slice of bread that you would use as a plate. Um, it's all through history, but most famously in the High Middle Ages, when actually in the High Middle Ages and early Tudor England, it was really just used as part of like the theater of the tournament. They they had kind of lost their necessity and became more like just a way to show off your money that you could basically throw away bread. Interesting. And then what's interesting to me about bread is as a non-baker, non really, like, I don't really cook too often, um, it's surprising to me how difficult bread is. Because we you know we started watching yeah. the Great British Bake Off and I'm like, oh, they're making these amazing elaborate pastries and desserts and I don't know, like confections. And it's, yeah. Astounding like what they work, do. Yeah, like it's it, all hard stuff. A lot of things are technique, but when they got to bread, always the killer. Well, and how many seasons has the winner of Bread Week won the season? I don't know, actually. Uh, many. <laughs> Especially in the first few seasons, I think it was almost every season for like the first five years, five or six years. Yeah, so in my head, something like bread is so s simple. It's bread. Like, all you need is bread so much what's the ingredients flour <laughs> flour salt water and yeast and yet that's it the struggle is real and other things sometimes but it you know there, there are just so many things especially anything with yeast because like anything that can make the yeast die or just be a little like salt won't necessarily kill it but it makes it sluggish and uh, you did something with it. yeast on this episode that uh, you apologize for. What was it again? Yeah, so remember, this is early days of quarantine, so it was very limited in what I had. So I actually had some sourdough starter at the time, but I wasn't going to waste it on bread that I wasn't going to, that you're not going to eat, especially when getting flour at that time was so hard. Um, and I didn't have any ale barm because, you know... Who has that even when it's not a pandemic? Wait, you don't have ale barm laying around? <laughs> just have, yeah. Um, and that's what they would have used. Most likely ale barm most of the time or sourdough. Um, I didn't have that. So I had yeast, which was even hard to get at that time. So I used dried yeast. And I yeah, apologized. during quarantine, I think in the earlier... It was hard to get anything. Well, not even just that, but there was like a, a bread baking yeah. phase that people yeah. went through. Which was so weird like that I started this channel during that time. <laughs> Perfect timing, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, something that comes up often in your episodes, and even to this day, uh, I think it's a trend that started, you know, a few months ago. People seem to think that you're an alcoholic. 
<laughs> know, what, somebody's somebody's comment the other day was like, I love watching Max as in his during his slow descent into alcoholism. <laughs> the thing is, I almost never drink, except when I'm filming. Since this is an Italian dish, go ahead and pour a glass of fine Italian wine. That's not true. We partake in the weekends. But and and on the weekends. But only one night a week usually. And on any day that really ends with day. We it's not true. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I really don't drink that much. Um, and so it's just funny because people are like, you're drinking all the time. No, I'm just drinking all the time that you're seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is once a week, every or Tuesday. Which is once a week, every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Like, Pacific I promise time. you, he's not having wine for breakfast. He's... I know. That's the other thing. People think that, like, I'm filming this live or something. Um, like, it's a little early for that. And I'm like... It was 5 p.m. on a Sunday. <laughs> Come on, lay off. It's been a week. Let the men drink. Right? You know what? It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Cause well, and to be fair, during the early pandemic days, well, I was drinking a lot. We were drinking a lot. We were all lot. drinking a lot. We were drinking, like, most days. So. Well, it was funny because it was hard to get flour. It was hard to get yeast, but it was not hard to get vodka. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we work, we work in marketing, and a lot of the ads that I was seeing was for alcohol because, yeah. you know. It's like, are you home? Are you depressed? Have a drink. It'll make you more <laughs> depressed, but you won't mind so much. So I promise you, he does not have an alcohol, I do not alcohol, have an alcohol issue. Alcohol. I do. <laughs> I do like two, three drinks a week. Oh man, that is really good. Probably. Maybe. Anyway, so is, is there anything from this episode that you've learned or since the ep aired? <clears throat> aired? <laughs> yeah, lots. Um, I mean, Actually, lots about trenchers in general and some of their other uses and a lot of the nuance, which, you know, in these early episodes, I didn't go into as much nuance because I was trying to keep them short. Mm -hmm. And even now, there's so much stuff that I have to leave out. Um, but there's a lot more nuance to, especially during the high Middle Ages, how they were being used. And, um, and, and the thing with talking about anything medieval is... It's a large period of time, and it's a large area. Poland, Germany, England, Spain, they're all very, very different, and different things are happening in those places. So, you know, somebody will say, that's not how they use trenchers in England in the 15th century. No, that's not how they use trenchers in England in the 15th century. But that's kind of the problem when I you know, try to cover such a large topic. And you wouldn't think that trenchers is a very, you'd think that's a very niche topic. It's actually a, a very wide, wide, wide topic. Uh, you know, sometimes people think, take things very personal. I do. <laughs> well, and it's, well, it's also like, this is my knowledge and you have different knowledge and yes. this person has different knowledge and nobody has all of the answers. And so... You know, it's, get it. that's just how uh, it Speaking goes. of knowledge, uh, you get this question often, and I know you've answered it in the past, but just for our new viewers to this channel, what is your background, your educational background? I have a background in music. <laughs> um, that's my, I mean, that was what my degree was in, was classical voice. Um, but I took a lot of history classes, and my, I'm an autodidact. Uh, which, you know, I'm self-taught when it comes to cooking and when it comes to history. I really started getting entrenched, entrenchered ah, in history <laughs> um, well, ever since I was a little kid, but it was all not through school, not through formal education. It was through my own research and learning and, and reading. Yes. And then when the internet came along, it was like... <laughs> <laughs> so this is a passion for you. This is a hobby, like yes. you learning everything that to create this channel you, you know you're just broadcasting it to a wider group of people rather than right. just me i have to listen to all yeah, of this exactly <laughs> I'm, I'm bombarding other people with it well that's why it's you know i i wish that i could be more helpful but sometimes someone will um, message me on instagram or whatever and say hey can you tell me the history of this dish and one i, I don't have time to to type that long a message but two I, unless it's something specific that i've done for the channel or that i'm researching or that i just know off the top of my head yeah 
it's not something that I know. Um, you yeah, because your specialty tends to be in European history. Is there a specific time where you tend to specialize in? Or? Like the Anglo-Saxon period, I know a lot about that period, um, and the early Norman period, and then the, the Regency period, so the late 18th, early 19th century in England. Um, that's, that's my Fach, as they would say in the book. Your Fach, F. A -C -H. Wait, what are you saying? F A C H. It doesn't need to be bleeped. People, turn on your subtitles because I know so that. The fa your fach is like your a, what? a specialty <laughs> type Maxwell, of, kids are watching of this. Voice. Jamie's not even one. He's like right there. The coloratura or bel canto style. Interesting. Okay. Well, yeah. I might edit that out. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for sharing your trencher video. It was very interesting. Um. One thing I noticed going back to it, it's one of those videos that kind of started picking up traction. It was I, the first big one. Yeah, it was kind of. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know if it was the comedy in it, the the flipping of the table or. I honestly don't know. I mean, I have found that when I start an episode with a bit of a joke with, yeah. you know, it, it keeps people longer and, you know, I should do that more often. I mean, in and general. And I try sometimes it's you not know, funny. You, you got to get people's attention right away. Right away. It's. I mean, even my videos, which have a very good retention rate, you see the first 20 seconds and it's just like, it you know, it a... drops down to 70%. So 30% of the people quit after 10 seconds. Well, you, you should see my videos. They're a little rough. Uh, I mean, honestly, the average YouTube video, it's like 60% of people <laughs> click out in the first 10 seconds. So I'm doing all right. But yeah, no, this was the first one that I think, well, in that week we got like 30 thousand views or 20,000 views something like that which the next closest video was like 700 views. yeah it was abysmal <laughs> but anyway um i want to call it out it was very good for being a brand new channel <laughs> thank you very and much and you are a new channel you're almost a year old yes next week yes lovely all right so user comments uh, i want to call out a few this comes from user cookie squad i have no idea how you showed up on my feed of suggestions however you earned a new subscriber you remind me of Alton, Braun, Alton, Alton Brown's old show. Which I definitely took some inspiration from. Of course. And then, you know, there was a, at least one article that titled <clears throat> you as the gay Alton Brown. Are you gay? <laughs> News to me. <laughs> News to me. It's high praise. It's, it's, we'll take it. <clears throat> I mean, the thing is, Alton Brown is so much more talented in the actual, like, his knowledge of, of food. Like, he's an actual chef? I don't know. Like, if he was trained as a chef or just knows everything about cooking and, and everything. Yeah. He's an amazing human being. He's funny. He's smart. He's You know, charming. once the world opens up, I would like to take a chopping class. What do you call those? Like, knife cutting? Knife? Yeah. Chopping? I mean, that's kind of my goal is to Let's hone my cooking skills His more. and his chopping classes or whatever you call <laughs> those. very specific. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to I be. I bet they have that, like, sur la table. <laughs> All right. Uh, next user comment. This comes from Mike Mallinson. There's Mike. a serious lack of intelligent medieval studies content on YouTube. I've wished for a medieval Townsend style channel for a long time, and here you are. Thank you. I'm passing this on to all my reenactor geek friends as well. Let me know if you launch a Patreon at some point. And I did. Well, this was seven months ago or eight. I, yeah, I didn't launch it until. After Garum, I think. Yeah, but you have a Patreon now. I do have a Patreon now. And you should join Tasting History. No, these are my viewers. Oh, sorry, sorry. Stand back. <laughs> I'll, gi I'll give him 50% of the proceeds, I promise. <laughs> he won't. <Get> nothing. <laughs> All right. Next user, uh, Fredo New Year. As a reenactor, I'm seriously hooked on this channel. I try to emulate the old recipes from my time period, and it takes a huge deal of research. So this content I really can appreciate. Keep up the good work. I have. I hope. You know, you do get uh, comments often from people saying they're part of the SCA or yeah. ESCA. I, I don't know if that's pronounced <clears throat> it. I think it's just But SCA. Um, yeah, so a lot of these uh, people who are part of this group and also a lot of people who play Dungeons and Dragons, like they use yes. your channels, their knowledge that you learn from your channel as inspiration. Yeah, in their games. Design uh, which I think is campaigns. so cool. Like okay. reenactors and um, whenever archaeologists like message me. It's like just an extra, like, I don't know. That's so cool. But people who are like really 
invested in it and and kind of know what they're talking about so it's like oh i did something right you know? <laughs> <laughs> i think you do most things right we'll see I, well not all things i said most don't right, take fair enough don't, <laughs> slow your roll sister <laughs> like 99.9 all right well i didn't say that either um so yeah no that's exciting that people can take inspiration from your show um so as viewers know and i've mentioned in my earlier episodes my show doesn't really have a structure my show is it is what it is love it or hate it you know like it is what it is just take it and i'm not saying that in a sassy way i'm just saying <clears throat> i am rough. sound pretty sassy to me. no no it is rough like capital r o f u f f <laughs> rough <laughs> rough <laughs> so i want to have a redemption for myself and you too Hi, jamie um <clears throat> we had a valentine's themed episode ish kind of oh last yes. week for episode seven we were supposed and to have some stuff on there. i wanted you to share a little bit of um the sour valentines because you actually had a ktla you were on live yes. for the second time which is amazing yes. and like, we just got the link to that by the way oh a okay. week after it aired. oh gosh that's fine but you were on ktla and you talked about valentine's day and one of the topics you discussed were sour valentines. So sour valentines, so lemon valentines, or vinegar valentines. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep it because again, this show is rough. It is rough. <laughs> can you tell us a, just a quick overview of what it is, and we can share uh, three quick ones that you didn't discuss. Yeah. In your facts by Max video. Yes, because I also did a facts by Max. Which, by the it. way, lives on TikTok, and he moves them over to Instagram and Twitter. So I'll put the link Instagram, where you can Twitter, find them. Facebook. Facts by know. Max. Um, I'll see if I can play a clip of this on there. Yeah. yeah. Facts by Max. Today, Valentine's Day cards are sweet, funny, and sappy. But in the 19th and early 20th century, some people sent lemons or vinegar cards. They had mean-spirited rhymes like, In prison you ought to be doing some time, for to wear such a face must be surely a crime. Or, Hey lover boy, the place for you is home upon the shelf, because the only one who'd kiss you is a jackass like yourself. And they got really mean. Like this one that said, all you live for is your camera. You are really in a rut. Gad, you shouldn't hang your pictures. You should hang yourself, you nut. They actually got so mean that the post office in England started refusing to deliver them. Especially because they were usually sent COD, which meant that the person receiving the mean note had to pay the postage. So the next time you think that social media has just become too toxic, know that your great-great-grandparents were just as bad. We're basically anti-Valentines. They would be what you sent to someone that you weren't interested in. Um, but then they, they started to get really, really mean um, to the point where the post office, the British post office refused to even deliver them at one point. Um, yeah. Luckily, they've, went out, they've gone out of fashion. <laughs> yeah. Because I couldn't take that. Be nice, people. All right. So I would love if you read two of the ones that, um, that you shared with me already. Okay. You claim you're good at anything, so come on, show some proof, and let me see how good you are at jumping off the roof. That's horrible. That's so, so mean. So charming. <laughs> um, here's one. Pray take an honest friend's advice, or you will have to pay the price. Your idle tongue must cease to wag, or it will, or it will wear a warning tag. This warning tag, I think, or it will wear this. It's basically like telling people that she's a gossip. I mean, maybe she is. Okay. <laughs> I get to read one now. So this one's called Old Rooster. You make pretense of being young, though your muscles weak and nerves unstrung. Your actions go from bad to worse, so you really out to have a nurse. That's terrible. Yes, who would say that? I is would that what you're going to send to me? No, I would never. I gave you flowers. <laughs> he did. He gave me some lovely flowers. <laughs> I would never read this to you. I promise. <laughs> you see his face. He's gonna <laughs> next year. I'm gonna get this. Off to the home with you. <laughs> well, um, Max does have uh, these facts by Max up on his TikTok and Instagram and his Twitter. Yes. Uh, oh. I'll play a few here if you can't find them because YouTube's kind of your go-to. I'll maybe try and like. Bring in a few yeah, here I can't and put there. Yeah, them on YouTube for some reason. Yeah, it just doesn't play well. It plays at the as a vertical yeah. video. It's not that great. So let us wrap up and just call out our special guest that's been hanging out. Uh, our sad, depressed guest. Eeyore. I have nothing to say. You chose him. 
Free Pokemon days. What's wrong with Eeyore? Nothing. Do you have an Eeyore voice, by the way? Not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can you do Winnie the Pooh? I cannot do Winnie the Pooh. Um, he's a really hard one to do. Cause, so only two people have ever like voiced Winnie the Pooh. It was Sterling Holloway, mm -hmm. uh, who was the original one, who I think also played Sir Hiss. Um, and then Jim Cummings, who still does it now. And he does Tigger as well. But... The weird thing is Sterling Holloway, that was his actual voice. Like, that's how he talked. He talked like Winnie the Pooh, because that's just, that was his voice. Can you give us your best Winnie the Pooh? Oh, I, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> that was more Mickey the Mouse. Can you give us your best up, down, turn it around, drop it low <laughs> Winnie the Pooh song? <laughs> up, down, touch the good. That's how I feel every morning. <laughs> that's I can't. I'm in the mood. Do do for, for food. food. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, well, that is this episode of Catch Up With Max. Thank you for tuning in to Catch Up With Max and Jose. And I'll see you next week for our Tasting History one year anniversary celebration. Year anniversary. I love it. Cool. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>